Short Questions, Short Answers by Torah Teacher Ariel and eBible. Yeah, I'm the author. All right, let's read the question. Question says, why was circumcision so important to the Jews? All right, let's find out. God commanded Abraham to be circumcised. That's the short answer. God also commanded eight day old baby boys to be circumcised, right? It's a baby boy. How cute. All right. Circumcision was a command of God, so the Jews rightly took it seriously as they do with all of God's commandments. In other words, we Jews do not believe that the law has come to an end in Messiah. You've heard that popular teaching? Circumcision was a hot topic in the first century of Israel. By Paul's day, it had lost its simple surgical meaning and it had taken on a sociological meaning. What do I mean by that? Instead of being a sign of the Abrahamic covenant, like read in Genesis 17 and in Leviticus 12, it had become code word for conversion to Judaism. So it was being misused by the Judaisms of Paul's day to seal the deal for Gentile proselytes who were wishing to be counted as legally recognized Jews in the Jewish community. And this upset Paul because the Torah prescribed no such proselyte ceremony. It's an entirely man-made rubric, and it's an unnecessary one at that. All right, so here's what Covenant Israel really looks like. You guys have seen this slide before. It's Covenant Gentiles plus Covenant Jews. Paul taught that believing Gentiles and Jews were both genuine covenant members and both were covenant bound to follow Torah, including circumcision. He really had nothing bad to say about that. Paul only dissuaded circumcision in Galatians due to his Jew, due to Jewish misuse of this God-given sign. All right, let's look at the longer answer. Why did God have Abraham remove the foreskin in the first place? Why the male sex organ? You guys ever stop and think about that? Why that place? Um, Tim Haig is fond of noting that the um, Abraham and Sarah had an absence of children and, and their age, you know, they were getting up there in age. And so this is really the complication. And so um, basically what Tim is uh, trying to point out is that circumcision upon the, 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 on the, the male uh, sex organ right there actually has to be interpreted within the narrative flow of Genesis as far as, in other words, does this answer the, the, the problem that was created by their age and their absence of children, or does this complicate things even further? All right, let's keep going. The promise would come not by the strength of the flesh, which the Hagar plan represented, but rather by above human means. Okay. Abraham did not hesitate to circumcise both himself as well as the males of his household. Looking forward at its effect in the biblical narratives, we learn that it was to become a unique marker outwardly identifying those males of the offspring of Abraham as inheritors of the magnificent promises that God was making with this particular man. So Abraham became the first in a series of covenant members who would carry an outward sign that would uh, identify him in a unique place among God's faithful. And that's what we're really thinking about. It did not, nor does it now serve to secure the promises that God gave to him through personal effort. What is more, the sign of circumcision was to be an indicator that all subsequent male covenant participants were adopting the same faith that Abraham possessed. You guys understand that? All right. So let's look at this again. Obviously, it was incumbent upon the faithful father to pass his sign on to his son because eight day old baby boys do not circumcise themselves. So something that parents give to their children. The promises were of faith. You can read Romans chapter 4 carefully. And to be 100% sure, the Torah says that the promises were given to him before he was circumcised. Read that in Romans 4, 10, and 11. Before he was circumcised, he was counted as righteous. So he looked up at the stars and God promised that his seed would be as numerous as the stars in Genesis 15, 5, and 6. Abraham was credited with being righteous because he believed the unbelievable. So with this foundational Genesis teaching in our arsenal, right, about him being credited as righteous and, and uh, receiving circumcision, I'm sorry, receiving the, the um, status of righteous before he was circumcised, we're now poised to turn our attention directly to Paul's continuing application of circumcision in the life of a first century covenant member, be he Jewish or Gentile. Right? It makes sense. We can now better understand Paul if we actually first go back and better understand Abraham's interaction with God. Paul does not indicate in Galatians that circumcision was being relaxed 
now that the prophesied Messiah has come and gone. And this is a challenge to traditional Christianity, who likes to imagine that uh, Messiah's coming and going has spelled an end to the Torah to include physical circumcision. Well, Paul does teach, and this is very careful that we make this proper distinction when we're reading through the book of Galatians, per se. What Paul teaches is that circumcision must be properly understood and applied on a community level if each Torah true covenant member was to remain in right standing with God. So we had a misuse of the sign and Paul's instructions regarding that. Surely the Galatian Jews and Gentiles that we're talking about here in our discussion were entertaining notions of implementing community circumcision based on their their understanding or their misunderstanding of the social benefits it provided as a people group of God. And that was particularly from the majority to the minority, from the Jews who are the blue people in my little picture there, to the Gentiles who are the little red guy standing on the other side of that separation wall. And we talked about that wall in a different topic, in a different study. However, given the views we have just examined, we in the 21st century Christian communities have no reason now to continue misunderstanding and misapplying this important covenant sign as well. Really, there's no excuse since we've got the the Torah and we've got Paul's writings. There's no reason for us to misunderstand. All right. Catch my podcasts, which are available on iTunes. You can Google search me under the term Ariel Hanavi in the iTunes store. And of course, my YouTube channel where I park a lot of uh, my teachings as well uh, is available for you all. I encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel because I upload new content weekly. In fact, I upload content almost daily. Okay. All right.